So we are in crisis mode right now. This has been a week of perseverance and adaptability as we are completely and entirely without water. And it's the middle of summer and it's 90 degrees. So this past week, Jeremy had to go out of town and about an hour into his trip, I went to go turn on the faucet and I found that we were without water. Um, because he was out of town, I went to try and troubleshoot the system myself, checking breaker boxes, uh, trying to see if the uh, spring house, or if the spring was dry, I went down and removed the cover and was able to check in there. There was water down there. I went to check the pressure tank. Uh, I went to go and reach my hand in to turn on the faucet that he had installed down there um, at the pressure tank. And uh, about five inches from my hand, there was a copperhead that decided to take up residence underneath the whole pressure tank area. Um, I was able to test that system uh, without getting bit, um, but uh, I found out that through calling over some neighbors after that and uh, getting some assistance that uh, not only did our pump go bad, but uh, there's some problems with the wiring of the system in general just being too small for the distance that it has to run from the house down to the pressure tank. Now, when we moved to this property, we knew that the systems that were set up were temporary systems. Uh, we knew that we were you know, borrowed time uh, with the systems that we had until we could get our house built and get our, our own system set up. Unfortunately, uh, our systems are starting to crash before we can get the house built. and. Uh, this the water um not, us not having water not having a submersible pump right now is a major major problem not only do we not have the pump and the water but uh actually going down there uh, to get water out via hand uh, by dipping it in like we did over the winter when our pipes rose is actually kind of hazardous because we think there might um, be more than one snake down there possibly a nest of snakes that are living down underneath the board and stuff that's down there the styrofoam and, uh, and there's like a little uh, runoff and creek down there and that's where they like to be in this hot temperature. So uh, it's kind of hazardous at this particular point. So what we've been doing is hauling buckets of water from a neighbor's house and uh, Jeremy had just come home early from his trip and uh, we're gonna start setting up some systems to get us by until we can get a well dug. This could take anywhere from one to two months until we can get our well dug. Uh, but definitely that's becoming a priority is, is getting that well installed and uh, getting some water to the house. Okay, quick and dirty solution temporarily we're going to try is to install a gravity system on the top of the hill. I uh, put a T-fitting into our plumbing inlet to the trailer over the winter which, so that we could add a hose during the summer, which we did. And it's actually going to be the hose that hopefully saves us and gets us through until we get our well drilled. So I'm going to go up there and put down a pallet, level it up, put a couple barrels and build a sort of a gravity tank and then we'll have to use two other barrels to fill from the spring, haul it up, fill up the barrels so at least we have some water with pressure um, and we're going to cross our fingers and hope this works. Uh, this is not the ideal situation, but hopefully it'll alleviate the pain for however long it takes for us to get our water system installed. Now we got about 250 feet of garden hose running directly down to the water input to the trailer. So now I'm going to set up some barrels. So this is what we're doing. Um, I'm about 40 feet above the highest the shower uh, head at the camp which should give us pretty decent pressure should give us at least 20 pounds of pressure which should be enough to function and so we're going to run I'm going to make a bulkhead or I'm going to make a uh, manifold just like we would a rain barrel system I mean these, this is what this was for was to build a rain catchment system but now it's going to be a gravity fed water system for our uh, camp. So I'm going to make a manifold, put some two two inch bulkhead fittings in here, run a spigot off the end, hook the hose to it. We're going to fill all these up uh, from the spring using the remaining barrel we have, which means three trips to fill this whole thing up. But then at least we'll have 150 gallons at least of, of water. And then we're going to bleach the heck out of it. 
then fill it all up again, rinse it out, and then fill it all up again and see what we got. So that's the plan. But right now we are actually waiting on a guy to come and check out our situation to give us a bid on drilling a well. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll have another guy coming to give us a bid. And then uh, we're going to go to the store and get parts. So we'll see you then. All right, so it's the next day. We talked to the well guy last night and there are some complications with both our well and uh, our current system. Um, we were going to try and put in a well at the top of the hill and then uh, slow pump that to a cistern which would gravity feed to our um, house down below. But the well guy, uh, he water witched up there. There's no water and uh, there wouldn't be enough elevation to do what we want to do up there. So we had to find a new location down by our house for our well. Uh, it's probably going to be about two months until we can get that well installed because we need to get repermitted for it. Uh, we need to get the road cleared uh, and we need to get the, the uh, rig in there. So in the meantime, we still have this water issue. We are going to still try and fill up those 55 gallon drums. Uh, today we're going to go down to the snake pit, uh, which is where our um, spring box is. We're going to see if we can clean it up a little bit, hopefully reduce some of the we high weeds around there, hopefully not get bit, and see if we can pump water into 55 gallon drums. Snakes were all under here. Need more than one? Possibly. But you don't know. No. For sure. There's like on under like that's that styrofoam and this? yeah, like a, yeah, both of it. There's a snake hole right there's a when you lift that board up, there's a board on the ground he was like kind of there's a snake hole under that but he was right where that hose is this splice a little bit and see if this wire's fried. It looks pretty fried. It's black. But I'm going to see if we can find a little bit farther up, test it. I might cut this off right here actually. Test this. If we can get power to here, I could maybe pull that pump and see if we can get it to work again, but I don't know. I'm going to try everything. That's a different gauge than what's coming in, right? At the pigtail. It... This is... Well, 
where this was spliced together. This is regular pump wire coming from the trailer. But this splice goes down to stranded 14 gauge wire, which is way too small. You need about 8 gauge. So, I'm not. We might get lucky and that might be okay, but I'm not holding my breath. That's a perfect place to for a snake to hide. And try lifting up on that corner of that board right there, because that's where he was. See if he's under there. If he is, you'd better flush him out. I kind of need to anyway, because I gotta see if I can get more of that wire. You know what gauge that is? Pump cable. <clears throat> Twelve. So it's just the splice going down to fourteen. Yeah, this should be eight and it's twelve. It's three hundred and fifty feet to the trailer, 120 volt pump. It's definitely should be eight gauge. All right, so I was down at the spring testing the uh, wire, the pump wire, and it was only 12 gauge wire, and it was spliced to a 14 gauge wire. It needs to be an 8 gauge wire, so that's part of the problem. The wire burned up, uh, no voltage in the wire, so I'm going to have to run a new 8 gauge wire down there and probably get a new pump. I haven't pulled the pump out of the spring yet to see if it's salvageable, but. I'll do that tomorrow. Right now, I am working on a little emergency backup water pumping system so we can get water out of the spring into 55 gallon barrels and haul it up here. <clears throat> so I got a 12 volt battery from our old solar system and I got this little Seaflow uh, 12 volt pump that usually you put these in boats to run like a sink or whatever. It's got a little filter on it. Uh, Pumps about three gallons a minute at about maximum of 55 psi. It has a little built-in pressure switch, which is kind of cool. So we're going to test it. I got to wire it up with a, just a wire here. I don't have a switch yet. So got some food grade hose here, and we're just going to pump five gallons of water and make sure it pumps five gallons of water. works. All right, so today marks day seven of not having any water. Uh, full update is that um, our system crashed about a week ago. Uh, we have since determined that the problem is that the, we think the pump got clogged. It overloaded the wire, which was already uh, too small of a gauge to pump it all the way up to our house, which is like over 300 feet. Um, so it burned up that wire and we think it potentially may have burned up the pump as well. Now we've been hauling water from a neighbors for the last seven days. We're talking bucket baths and bucket laundry um, for the last seven days. And we're, we need a solution to this water issue because it is midsummer right now. Now, the reason that we don't want to go and haul water uh, manually dipping into this spring right here is because there's copperheads that we saw right here uh, when I came down the first time. We have not seen the copperhead yet. Uh, it could be many. They're, they're underneath this board right here. At least the one was underneath this board. Um, so that poses a little bit of a risk with hand dipping into this well. So our, our temporary solution to this 
is that we're going to take some uh, rubber tubing, put it down into this well so we don't have to mess with leaning over it and hand dipping in, pumping it into these 55 gallon drums that are on the back of this pickup truck and then hauling these up to two drums at the top of the hill where we will use those as storage. We'll use these to fill up and fill up the other barrels and then we'll use those as storage uh, so we don't have to keep running over to the neighbor's house. What about a long-term solution? Um, well, we might be ordering in some more wire because uh, hand dipping from these from this well for the next nine months or so until our house is built is somewhat um, going to be somewhat of a challenge. So we're going to see what we can do about fixing this problem for a longer term solution. But for right now, we're going to be filling up barrels uh, with this small pump. First thing we're going to do is weed eat this, clear these weeds out so we can see what we're doing and maybe scare away some snakes if they're here. And then we'll get that lid off. Yeah, that pipe is what it's sitting on, and it's got a built-in filter, I guess. All right, here's the pump. I'm going to try and pull this out here in a little bit, but that little screen part right there is what I think may have gotten clogged and caused the impeller to try and overlook, you know, or the motor to overwork and draw too many amps and burnt the wire and possibly the pump, but I'm going to pull this out later. First, we're going to See if we can get some of this water out. And then we're probably gonna shock this whole system with some bleach. <clears throat> Cause there's creepy crawlies, like this little guy. Three feet! Whoa! Whoa, whoa! on the bottom sucking up silt. Yeah, sort of sticking up, but there's a lot of silt in there. How to hillbilly your water. Working so far. 
better than hanging over the side and reaching down with a bucket. Yeah. <clears throat> so, little RV pump, 50 bucks. Two 10 foot lengths of clear water tubing. What is that, like 12 bucks? 12 bucks each. Yeah. Now, I can put this whole contraption into a little tote and have a mobile pump. Okay, we got these two barrels filled. Um, took about 30 minutes maybe. So now I'm gonna let this regenerate. It's almost down on the bottom. But, so it got us about 100 gallons without, you know, going dry. So now I'm gonna try and figure out what the regeneration rate is. And uh, we're gonna go up and fill up the pig, pig barrels and uh, fill up the holding tanks and we'll be back down to do it again Pig water's topped off. Uh, it was down to about half when we just topped it off now and it'll last them, whole barrel will last them uh, about two weeks. So we ought to be good to go for a little bit. This will buy us some time so we don't have to come back down here. Normally we fill this with the hose from the house, but um, we got some time here until we figure out what's going on with the pump. Now we're gonna take these barrels up to the top of the hill and we're gonna try a little gravity fed experiment. We have those two other barrels at the top with the hose connecting it to the plumbing of the house. Um, we don't think there'll be enough pressure but to, to actually push the water through, but we're just going to see, experiment, and uh, at the same time we're going to shock those hoses and the barrels. So let's go to the top. Uh, this is what was going to be our uh, rain barrel system. So right now we're going to use it and test it to uh, see if we can make it gravity feed down to the trailer. I put a uh, bulkhead fitting in here. This is inch and a half PVC. I would have used a two inch bulkhead fitting, but they didn't have enough, so I went with inch and a half. And uh, if this works, I'm gonna connect this one to that barrel with a little manifold out of PVC. But right now we have a bulkhead fitting and just a reducer to a brass spigot for your garden hose. And I'm gonna fill this with this barrel, see if it feeds down the hill. Don't think it's gonna have enough pressure, but it was a good experiment and at least it'll let us shock the hoses to clean them out and make sure they're all good. All right, we're gonna bleach this a little bit less than a cup, about 0.8 cups of this amount of water. And then uh, that'll shock the whole hose system. And we'll run it through, and then we're gonna run a whole nother, we're gonna run a whole nother barrel through to uh, flush it out, and then probably a third barrel to rinse it out. that much. That's how I cook. <laughs> Works. All right, we got the barrel full uh, and it is bleached. So I'm going to go turn off the toilet to make sure that none of the water that does trickle in goes into the septic system. And then we're going to turn the lever and uh, turn on the tub and see if we can uh, get any sort of pressure whatsoever. Now we're going to open up the tub and uh, see what we get. Alright, close 
both of those and try the kitchen sink. A lot of air, but it's coming out. You want me to just keep the sink on until it runs out? Kitchen sink, yes. Well, it looks like we got some water coming down. Um, it's not a whole lot of pressure, but it's enough to, um, I guess, take a bath, wash your hands, that kind of thing. Probably fill the toilet, so that's good. All right, we're gonna try and see if we uh, have any shower pressure. Well, it works. Our gravity system works. So I'm going to get another load, two barrels full. Thing is regenerated. It's been, I don't know, a couple hours, but I don't know exactly how long it took because we weren't here. So we're going to get these two, load them up, take them up to the top of the hill. I'm going to build uh, the rest of the two barrel system, fill up those barrels, and then we're going to test to make sure hot water works. Um, and the toilet flushes and all that fun stuff. So, all right, I got the pump disconnected, so I'm gonna yank it out and see what kind of mess we got. Take this up, try and clean it up and see if we can still get it to work. If we can get it to work, then we'll run new wire and hook it all back up. But we'll run the right kind of wire this time. This is a big ass wrench. So recently my dad gave me all of his tools that he had collected over his entire career. And this is the handiest wrench. Look at this thing. This thing will do anything. Thanks, Dad. I wonder if we can get one more out of it, but I'm not going to try.
Alrighty. All right, so Jeremy hooked up the manifold. Uh, we were able to fill both containers by just putting the hose in one. So they both uh, rose up equally. When we go, went to turn on the water, there was some air in the line. So it did take us a little bit to get the air pushed out uh, through the faucets down below, but the system works great. Uh, we are getting pressure. We are at about uh, 60 feet above the shower head at the house. So that gives us somewhere around 25 to 30 PSI of pressure to the house. Most houses are between 40 to 60. That's gonna be ideal. So we don't have a, a whole lot of pressure, but uh, compared to zero pressure by using buckets, um, you know, this'll do us just fine uh, as a temporary solution until we can figure something else out either with the pump or potentially with uh, a new well. So how long does it take to fill up our barrels, how long does it take to offload them, and how long are these barrels gonna last? Uh, when we go down to the uh, spring box, it takes about 30 minutes to fill up about one and about a little more than two thirds of a barrel. Uh, that pretty much drains out our spring box completely. We bring it up here, it takes about another half hour, maybe a little bit longer to offload all that water into these two barrels. It takes about two to two and a half hours to fill up the spring box. We didn't actually time this exactly because we were messing around with some other things, but two and a half hours later when the spring box was completely empty, it was full. So we know about two and a half hours to fill up that spring box, uh, give or take. And how long are these barrels going to last us? Uh, when it was just me here all by myself, I was going through about 15 gallons of water. That's about three, five gallon buckets that I was hauling from a neighbor's. Um, with me and Jeremy here, we were using twice that. And with the kids here, we're estimating not quite quadruple that, but somewhere in the vicinity of about uh, 50 gallons is what we're going to use for cooking, cleaning, laundry, um, you know, showers, uh, hand washing, toilet, all that kind of stuff. So around 50 gallons. So this should last us ideally about two days. So every other day, we're probably going to have to go down, uh, fill up the barrels in the back of the pickup truck and then offload into here. And again, it's a temporary solution. Now I know a lot of guys um, who may have seen, uh, who may be watching our channel for the first time are wondering, well, why don't you just go fix that system properly? You know, bring your uh, your pressure tank up to the house the way it should be so it doesn't freeze in the winter time. Why don't you run new wire down there, put in a new pump, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are not going to be using this spring whenever we have the new house. Uh, however long that takes us, it might be another six months, might be another nine months, might be another year until that house is built, but we will not use the natural spring anymore um, to pump water as potable water to our house. So we do not want to invest anything or very little as, as, as little as possible into that system. So this is what we're using to get by. Now, Jeremy is going to possibly buy some new wire to run down there and see if we can get that old pump to work. Uh, we're just gonna play it by ear because it is, like I said, another between six months and one year until we have a house. And this is a whole lot of hauling water. Uh, even though we're not doing buckets, we're doing five, 55 gallon drums. It's a whole lot of hauling water for the next six to, months, six to 12 months. So we're just gonna play it by ear and see how that is. Now, uh, in the next coming videos, you're gonna see Jeremy testing the pump. We'll see if that well pump actually works uh, or if there's a problem with it, we need a new pump and find out what solution uh, we come up with for that. And also we're gonna see if we can run our washing machine off of these drums. Uh, we're gonna see if it has enough pressure and can fill up the washing machine. So stay tuned for those videos coming up. We'll keep you posted as things happen here and take you along as we try to solve problems as they come up. If you guys like this kind of stuff, make sure you like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.